mentioned Dr. Chris Allen and put it to you, Rose Simpkins, actually. I mean, you heard um, Chris there talking about somebody who's been influenced by sort of far right extremist ideology. Actually, it's not, some may argue, it's not particularly underground. I mean, if you look, for example, if you've got the mainstream press, you know, very hugely circulated tabloid newspapers issuing headlines like a quarter of British Muslims sympathise with the motives of suicide bombers. That's not exactly an underground extreme. I mean, that, I remember that particular story was then, uh, the next day an apology was issued, but much later on in the newspaper, for example. It's those sort of narratives that seem to be out there in broad daylight. Absolutely. I totally agree that a lot of hate crime is committed by ordinary people. And it's actually um, condoned by ordinary people sometimes in just in in their narrative of of sort of saying, um, putting obviously Muslims down and uh, and in a way implying that people deserve it because of their because of the, their way of life. And obviously that's that's based on ignorance of their way of life. So I think it is very much about ordinary people and it is around sort of our, our press and our, our politicians and our leaders really holding that moral comp- compass really and saying you know we won't uh, we won't tolerate this and we won't use that sort of um, narrative against against a group of people well, we, we hear it from yeah. very ordinary people you know very ordinary people say oh yes but that's because they do this or they do that and and I just think there's a yeah there's a real underlying current of anti-Muslim feeling um, that is, 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 is very frightening. Sure, Kat, all right. Have, have you, would you agree with that, that there's this undercurrent of Islamophobia pervading society? I would. I would indeed, uh, uh, you know, agree with that sentiment. I mean, with the work that we do with, with mosques, we've seen a steady rise, particularly after the killing of Lee Rigby, a steady rise of um, kind of attacks on mosques starting off, uh, you know, very kind of negative uh, comments in newspapers to very, very kind of aggressive comments on social media. And over mm-hmm. the past two, three weeks, we've seen a very, very steady uh, increase in online hatred from, you know, ordinary people. I mean, my wife, uh, she always takes her son to, uh, you know, a cricket club. And, you know, we've we've seen comments from coaches that, have been teaching our kids for, for you know, a decade, say, some very, very kind of negative things, and we were quite shocked to hear those. So I, I would agree with the fact that there is a rise in Islamophobia. Mm. It's tangible. It, you can see it. You can hear it. You can, you can sometimes measure it. And, and in the case of mosques, we've clearly seen attacks increase on the physical buildings itself. I mean, Chris, um, Chris, would you agree? With, I mean, we also hear about a rise in anti-Semitism. We hear about yeah. a, a rise in hate crimes against Jews, especially around Jewish areas where almost private security f- f- firms are finding they've got more and more work on their hands there. I mean, is this a general... I mean, it sounds almost hysterical, but is there a general rise in hatred and confrontation? Is well, yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I think that, I think there's two ways of, of responding to this. I mean, going back to the early point that you were making, I think that you know we need to go back to 2011 when Saeed Avasi said that Islamophobia passed the dinner table test, and I think she was absolutely spot on with this. I mean, I think that you know there is this kind of acceptability that, that one of the other guests said, you know, like sort of you know, someone will say something, and then they say, yeah, but you know, Muslims are you know like this, all mm. Muslims, you know, and I think that that has become there has become a kind of an, an acceptability around this. I think the other other issue here as well is the far right. And if you look back over the last 10 or 15 years, for example, and if we look back to the English Defence League and we look at the, uh, Britain First in particular, what we've seen is we've seen this, these groups become ever more confrontational, ever more aggressive, and actually bring in these real messages of hate, particularly around Muslims and around the religion of Islam, into the mainstream spaces. And I think that one of the things that we can kind of say with that is that there has been this kind of legitimization of this kind of sentiment. So, you know, when we see Tommy Robinson on the television and some of the things that he says, very, very uncomfortable, you know, very, very nasty and very, you know, pernicious things. 
But actually, you know, people kind of like, you know, by giving him these platforms, by giving him, who I'd say is an extremist, you know, by giving him this chance to actually voice this, it kind of gives justification for others to take it. And it's like, well, if someone on the TV can say it, then why can't we say it as well as individuals? And I think that well, that's, there's this kind of thing, there's, there's become an acceptability around kind of Islamophobia and saying things about Muslims we wouldn't say about other groups. But I also think there's been a kind of push within to the mainstream of a much more aggressive and much more confrontational far right, which is specifically targeting Muslims. But then, Rose, we also surely have to really recognise the huge outpouring of compassion, of support, of condemnation of any uh, terrorist activity from any sector of society as well. And we've seen, as, as we heard the cleric talking earlier on, you know, this incredible series of events across the whole of the UK in memory of Joe Cox, where people mm. from all across all our communities come together. And surely this, is this what we should be focusing on more than anything? Well, that's what's really interesting, I think, at the moment, that the, where people are coming out saying, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to tolerate this, I'm not going to accept it. So there, we, we've, we've got this sort of thing going on at the moment where some people are being really sort of positive and then we, we're dealing with the haters. Uh, um, we talked earlier about social media and the online hate that's going on. Um, and what we know now is that a, a positive, more love-based tweet will have a longer life than the, the hateful tweet so I think what we need to do is, is be much more outgoing we're not to sit, not just sit back and think oh well it's nothing to do with me we've all got to say no this is not mm. how we want to live because the, the, the these haters do seem to be as they get getting platforms getting becoming legitimate there's a lot of fear going on at the moment a lot of change which brings around you know ordinary people then um adding adding to the rhetoric which gives other people the excuse to go and do something terrible yeah. like today and it's ordinary people condoning it coming out with the ifs and buts that say give other people oh well i'm going to do something about this because this is what this is this is acceptable these days to say these things sure Kat, what message are you going to send to the people who who you help try and protect I mean, today I've, I've just been very, very uh, delighted to see the Finsbury Park Mosque open and the numbers are bigger th than ever. Uh, you know, people have not been scared by this attack. Uh, people have come out with their families and they are praying in the mosques. And mosques up and down the country are opening their doors, you know, becoming very open places for people of faith and people of no faith. I mean, this week we've seen some of the biggest mosque iftars in the country where hundreds and hundreds of people have come to kind of break their fast with Muslims. So I think mosques are growing, they're evolving, they're, they really are becoming places of community uh, engagement. Okay. And I think that there's, there's, there's a lot of hope here. I think when uh, people were people have been surprised by the attacks and they want to say, okay, why are people attacking this institution? Let's go and have a look and really see what happens here. And I think uh, in a perverse way, the negativity is attracting people to find out, well, is there really these kind of negative things happening in this institution called a mosque? And when they go there, they're, they're pleasantly surprised to find out that these things don't exist there. Okay. These places are very positive places. Thank you to all of you. Thank you very much to Shokat. Uh, Waraish, also to Rose Simpkins and also to Dr Chris Allen. It's uh, just coming up to two minutes to ten. We need to, eleven, sorry, we need to reflect on the life of...